Here we go, folks, with nonlinear systems of equations, example three. And again, this will correspond to assignment 30. I keep saying it here. I've got the two up here. You see the question. I always feel compelled to just talk very quickly about the underlying graphs. The point of this would be that if you squared this out, if you, yes, I'll say it, foiled it, you would get an x squared. And you have a y to the first. And when y is to the first power and x is to the second power, it's a parabola. Now, why is that again? You know, and, and, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wasting time on this. You don't even have to listen for a while. But I just want to remind you that the standard form for, for a parabola, quadratic function, axis of symmetry, vertex, all that, is y equals ax squared. Remember, f of x is another name for y. y to the first, x to the second, that combination creates a parabola. So that graph, that top one there, would be this green parabola. Again, the color doesn't matter, but you get the point. All right, and then the other one, I hope by now you would know that when both variables are to the first power, that's y equals mx plus b. It's not that form, but y to the first, x to the first. So this bottom one here would be a line, and if I were to guess, these two probably are gonna hit each other in two points maybe. I don't know, there's lots of other pictures that could occur. You don't even have to draw the picture. I'm just trying to give you a rough sense of the behavior of this before we get into it. But as I keep saying, the larger issue is how do you actually solve it? Well, what do you guys think? Y equals expression? <gasps> well, hey there, Mr. Salad Bar. I think we should plug that expression that equals y into the other equation. Good idea. Substitution. I think that's an excellent suggestion here. All right, and again, my hope would be that this wouldn't be horribly confusing, so we'll go ahead and substitute that in. So we have x minus three times math expression takes the place of y equals negative one. We're plugging that expression in for y. Who says we can do that? Abraham Lincoln, transitivity property, if you saw that link on the earlier one. If you didn't, then my Abraham Lincoln reference made no sense at all. All right, but anyway, there you go. And this is ultimately going to become a quadratic equation. This question could have been on assignment number 11, over spring break, before spring break, when we were all together here in this lovely palatial building, all right? So anyway, to simplify this, I hope you would say, well, you know what, I need to square that out. I need to foil that part of it. So you bring down the x minus one, and you square it, you distribute it, you foil it, you might recall. And I'm doing some quick stuff. You know what, that, that, that squaring it, that foiling it, and we have to do that, by the way, because of the minus, is, is, is old stuff. So I'm gonna pull this up here now. We now have x minus three times, if you foil this, you're gonna get x squared minus two x plus one. I'm supposed to say I'm sorry for skipping over that, but that's, I'm not sorry. That's, ex I know, I'm a snob. I'm, I, hi, I'm a snob, okay, Mr. Snob. Um, that's assignment four. All right, so the deeper we get, the more we hope you remember things. So you distribute that out, foil it, and you get this. All right, then after that, you would want to distribute the negative three into the parentheses. So we're just doing all that assignment four cleanup stuff. And it would serve me right if I make a mistake when I do that. <laughs> all right, so there is danger in being a snob. Pride goeth before a fall. Um, <clears throat> I think we're good. And then, oh, <laughs> combine like terms. And so now we have negative 3x squared plus 7x minus 3 minus, um, equals negative 1. Now this time you'll notice there's two different terms that have x. So as we did on assignment 11, and I guess since I went to the trouble of creating the link, I will take you back to it. What I'm doing here is after all that simplify stuff, you'll notice that since 
there's multiple uh, terms that have X in them. What I'm working towards is that standard form, making it equal zero, that's so assignment 11, but that's the idea, two terms have X. So, there you go, that's called standard form and it equals zero. Then we flash back again to factoring, all right? And we haven't seen factoring for a long time, so what the heck, let's link back to it. <laughs> Factoring, descending order, factor out the negative, unfoil it, all those things. All right, I'm going to have to erase again and scroll upward. But my first thought would be, get your negative out of here, and I'd factor out that negative. My experience has been, and I've been doing this longer than most of you have been alive, oh, um, most people can factor trinomials easier when the first term is positive. So let's get the negative out of the way, which basically changes all the signs. Scroll it up, all right? Pause, catch up, do whatever you need to do. Yes, I'm old. I've shared with you before, I have socks that are older than most of you. That's nothing to be proud of. All right, but anyway, there you go. Take it up there. Let's hope that trinomial will factor even further. Well, to make a 3x squared, you have to have a 1x and a 3x. And I'm thinking they both have to be minus because a negative times a negative is positive. This is all, this is time of five, okay, guys? This is like February, all right? And uh, let's see, two times one, do it in the outer inner. Oh! Yes, that does indeed make a middle term negative 7x. It factors. Yes. All right. At which point, see, look at that. This is all kinds of flashbacks. This is an excellent section to end with because we get to see all our old friends. Quadratic, factoring. Anyway, now we can set each of these factors equal to zero. Now this first one would be the number negative one equals zero, which doesn't have any variables and is just silly. All right, then we have x minus two equals zero, which solves as adding two to both sides, x equals two, this is old stuff. I gotta be a snob, just have to. It's part of being a math nerd. And then if you set that factor equal to zero, you add one to both sides, you divide by three, and you discover that x equals one third. So there are two values of x, which seems to correspond to the picture that there's gonna be two points of intersection for these two graphs. All right, and each of those values of x needs a y value to go with it. Points, remember, we're looking for points of intersection for the line and the parabola, and it seems like there's two of them here, two values of x. Pause. Do whatever you need to do. I'm going to scroll this back up. So we have the value of x equals 2, which needs a y coordinate. And we have a different value of x, 1 third. And I would assume that each one, see two different values of x, two different points. So this x says, Who's my y value? Where's my y value? And again, we can plug it in either one back here, but I've always thought that if you have an equation that says y equals, and you want to know what y equals, that's the one to use. So, y equals, plug 2 in for x, and crunch the numbers. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So the ordered pair 2, 1 would emerge from that. And that would be one of the points of intersection. One of them over here. The other one. I want to know what y equals. y equals parentheses 1 third minus 1 squared. All right, this is arithmetic. Man, this guy's being a total snob here at the end of the semester. I don't know what else to say. But 1 is 3 thirds. You got to get a common denominator when you subtract. All right, I guess I'll show that step here. So that'd be one third minus three thirds. 
three thirds is one, isn't it? And then one third minus three thirds is negative two thirds. And then because that's a fraction, because there's no addition or subtraction in there, we can drop the squared on both of them. And it looks like negative two squared is positive four and three squared is nine, four ninths. So that would create the ordered pair x one third y four ninths. And these two points would, would constitute the solutions to that system because again, we had a line and a parabola and they can cross in two points. So that would be, what was that? Example number three. And it looks to me like we have two left that we're gonna work. Examples four and six. So let's cherish every moment we have left together, shall we?